Welcome everybody. Today we are going over our GT4 League season, reviewing each round. We'll see how far we get. We're hoping to make it halfway through. There was 14 races and so half of that would be seven. Uh, I'm joined by my co-host and uh, fellow driver in the league, Olivier Bellinger. Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Good to have you as always, man. Um, so yeah, we're just going to run through this. A uh, little bit of uh, background on this league. So uh, I've been a part of it for almost a year now. Olivier, you've been with this league for even longer, right? Yeah, about a year and a half, I believe. Yeah. Right. So year and a half. And it's pretty casual and just, you know, trying to have fun and make progress with our driving and have having good races. But with that being said, for this season, which started back around in August, uh, we have the GT4 cars. So everybody is in a GT4 car of some sort. Uh, Olivier, you chose the BMW M4, and I myself chose the Aston Martin. So two different cars which is the first time that we've actually had uh different cars for uh the league championship and that obviously brought some interesting moments to say the least and we'll get to those at some point other than that the league itself was structured this season where we had two qualifying laps and about 10 minutes to get those in Afterwards, we had a 45-minute race, and there was fuel restrictions, which would mean that there was at least going to be one pit stop every single race. There were a few rounds that were actually an hour long uh, for the race, and sometimes that meant even two pit stops. So we'll run it through, and um, let's start with the first round, obviously, and that was Daytona. So we got to Daytona, bit of an off season for me. Uh, Olivier, I know that you were always, well, have always been simming a lot. So I doubt you felt very rusty going into this, right? Yeah, I mean, not too much, but, you know, at the same time, uh, not usually my, my car class of choice when, uh, when I am doing races. So yeah, it was still going to be a little bit of a challenge just considering how, you know, unfamiliar we were with the car. Right, right. And uh, from what I understand, you're definitely a little bit more used to the GT3 cars. And since we haven't talked about that too much yet, uh, do you want to go over maybe a few of the key differences between something like a GT3 and a GT4 car, at least uh, when it comes to iRacing? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's the main differences between the cars is that GT4 is oriented as essentially a street car with, uh, you know, just some fairly minor modifications to make it, you know, good to race. Um, where a GT3 car is, you know, it might look sort of like the street car. It's, it's basically from the ground up a full race car. So you've got, you know, tons of uh, aerodynamics above and below the car. You know, uh, gearboxes are usually sequential rather than the automatic uh, dual clutches in the GT4s. And the weight is a, is a lot different uh, in the tires as well. So basically, you know, you're dealing with a, a slower, heavier car with less downforce in the GT4, which tends to make it actually uh, harder to drive, even though it's a little slower. All right. Yeah, good good explanation there, I think. Obviously, I've I've driven both as well, and I definitely concur, but I feel like you're understanding and explanation would be a little bit better there and uh so going into round one here at daytona it was uh one of those one hour long races which meant that you know pit strategy would definitely become an issue for most uh but before we began we had qualifying myself uh i qualified in the eighth position which wasn't too bad for me. I think just trying to stay within the top 10 was a big goal for me throughout the season. So uh, starting on the right foot there. And then Olivier, you uh, put it up in pole for round one. So that must have felt pretty good. Yeah, wow. I actually 
forgot that that was pull. I, I, I think that was kind of a surprise one too because I definitely didn't feel like I had, uh, I had that. But I guess you know the one lap pace of the BMW. I think actually it was pretty quick in the straights without the draft, so that was probably a little bit of an advantage there. Right, right. So it sh- it shook out pretty good for both of us uh, going through quali. Uh, however. The race was a different story, at least for me. So uh, as my race progressed, essentially I had some incidents, probably most of which being my own fault um, because I hadn't been racing for a little while. However, Olivier was battling at the front the entire time and we got to the end of the race And I had made such a muckery of mine that Olivier was coming around to lap me. And this gave us an idea because let's just say Olivier might have not had quite the amount of fuel remaining that he would have liked, but he did have a teammate around him who wasn't really in the race anyways. So... That brings us to our first clip, which I'm going to start right now, which is the last lap of (laughs) round one in Daytona from your perspective, Olivier. Do you want to talk us through this a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. So I remember this uh, vividly because I I came across the start-finish line for the last lap, and I saw my relative box. They were about 11 or 12 seconds back, and I'm like, man, this is going to be tough because they were gaining what felt like, you know, 15 plus seconds a lap. I mean, the the amount of fuel I had with three laps to go uh, was barely enough for one full throttle lap. So you can imagine that it was, uh, I was essentially crawling around the track, you know, just trying not to use basically any fuel. And I mean, you know, at this point I was like, Quentin is my savior because this is the only thing I got going. I mean, here I, I see my rearview mirror already. They're coming around, and I'm like, we've got the whole bank to go. There's there's absolutely no way. But I saved so much fuel in that infield going so slow that I just had, like, another, I don't know, liter or two, and I opened it up here, and then I had to already start letting off. But, you know, again, Quentin pushing me, you know, just it seemed like it was uh, the longest, you know, straightaway ever because I just saw them closing and closing and closing. And then there, that was when I, uh... oh, no, I thought that was actually already at the line. (laughs) Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. This is how long this felt, basically, in my perspective of just crawling down these straights with these guys with with actual fuel that, you know, they can finish the race. So, you know, here we opened up a gap. Uh, Quinn and I were talking, and, you know, we timed it right that I knew I was going to lose power coming off the bank, and that's about right now in the cliff and then here he comes to the rescue and absolutely shoves me uh down across the line for for probably the closest finish of the season yep and you could see that that merc coming down the inside that was the second place man and we have the video looping around now to the beginning of the lap again um beginning of the last lap that is but uh yeah i think that at the line it was what less than a few tenths that you ended up winning by because that Merc just went down into the apron and, and he was really hauling and trying everything he could, even, you know, being a little generous with track limits to, uh, try to beat you to the line there. Yeah, absolutely. It was just, you know, I remember at the time I wasn't completely sure if, uh, if I had made it, because, you know, I was just so focused on looking in my mirror, I wasn't even sure exactly when I crossed the line, and then by the time I'd already passed the line, I looked up and he was passing me, so I I knew it was going to be close, I wasn't honestly sure which way it went, Uh, and then, you know, within a few seconds, I look down, I see the the position, and then, you know, Quentin and I are uh, screaming on the radio to each other, just, we can't believe what what we just pulled off somehow, That that was a true team effort, you know. Oh boy, was it shaking and baking in Daytona, for sure. Uh, Well, anyways, it was a great season opener for you that you were able to to hang on and clinch the first win of the season there. Uh, I was obviously a lap down, 
uh, I ended up finishing in 18th position. So not the greatest start to the season for myself, uh, but it was definitely nice to be able to help you out. So with that being said, let's move on to the, uh, to the second round here. And that would be Fuji was round two. So we do have quite a few clips from round two to go over, but let's start again with qualifying. So I qualified in eighth position again, just as in Daytona. Meanwhile, Olivier, you qualified up in third position. So not pull, but pretty close. And uh, from there, we had the 45 minute race. So first, I wanted to take a look at the start here and I'll start that video right now. And this is from my perspective in eighth position. You can actually see Olivier up in the uh, sort of top right corner in the BMW, the white and blue BMW. And, you know, we're all just going in a gaggle in basically a uh, draft train into turn one. And uh, let's see what happens here. So somebody sliding down the inside, somebody else sliding down the outside. And uh, I think I took a, a pretty conservative approach to that race start uh, however you know it's still very close people all around and and I don't think I, I had really lost too much ground at this point maybe I was down in, in ninth or so but we have somebody going wide here and I sort of look at the inside but you know Fuji has all of these winding corners which um, you know makes it a really interesting track and while we follow my onboard from lap one here. I uh, just wanted to hand it over to you again, Olivier, and maybe talk us through what your thoughts were on Fuji, as we can actually see that I believe you are already in the lead at this point on lap one, so you made your way up from third to the lead already. Yeah, so this this was a fun one, because this is a track that I, I really have been enjoying um, since, since it's been in the sim, but... Yeah, when I drove it in the GT4, it was the first time driving it in, in, in a GT4, and I, I <laughs> quickly felt the other way around about the track, actually, just because of how, especially the BMW, it just was so unbalanced here, and, you know, these kind of medium speed corners is, like, it's the worst spot for it, really. Um, so, yeah, the car wasn't too happy. Uh, I didn't feel great about it, to be honest. My speed was seemed to be quite far off from the practice session. Um, so even going into qualifying, getting you know, P3, I was fairly content with that, but I also knew that, you know, this is a very difficult track to pass at, and um, I was, if I had any opportunity, I would have to take it right away. That was pretty much my mindset going into this one, just because uh, it's it's difficult to get the track position, and it's difficult then, you know, to overtake again, so, yeah, that was, that was my, uh, my perspective going into this race. Right, so... Definitely interesting. I, I ended up enjoying the track quite a bit myself. It was actually the first time uh, I had ever run the track was for this round. And uh, so you, you guys could hopefully see uh, all the way around the lap on this video. But we do have another video, uh, and I'll pop that one up right now. And this is actually from lap eight. And it looks like we're going to turn one here. So let's see what's going on. We have a cluster up ahead, somebody sideways, somebody way wide, and we still see Olivier ahead of us, not too far. Um, let's just say usually Olivier pulls out a big gap pretty quick on me. So uh, the fact that I was still that close to him after eight laps definitely proves that either I was doing something right or Olivier was struggling quite a bit, um, as he had mentioned. So. Um, overall, that <laughs> that little sequence helped me out a lot. I think that put me up to fourth position now uh, from my starting position of eighth. So I definitely wasn't doing too bad and, and learning the track. Uh, but we kept chugging along in this race. And we get to quite a bit later now, definitely probably past the halfway point. I'll pull up this next video. 
and that's going to be lap 21. So we're starting lap 21 here. Oh, we can see. Oh, I think I know what's going to happen here. So I'm defending very hard from somebody behind who we can't see in the shot yet. Um, and there they are on the outside. But I was able to actually block them. And turn one was a, a, a weak point of mine. I think one thing I learned over this season was... For me, one of my weakest points was, as he dives back down the inside here, uh, was the slow speed corners. High speed stuff, I usually did all right. Um, but there's there's just something about uh, maybe the nervousness of, of the car and me not being used to it. So slow speed stuff like turn one here at Fuji, definitely definitely not the most fun for me. And, and I was giving up some time there. But, uh, yeah, so we got somebody going around us in this little sequence on lap 21. And then a couple laps later, <clears throat> we have another little highlight here. Uh, so now I'm in a three-car battle going through the, through the lap. And definitely uh, went over the track limits there. But, you know, all is well as long as I'm not reaching that limit. And then we see the Aston Martin here slowing way up. Probably had a slowdown penalty. I think of the inside and just a little bit of contact. And we both just stick to each other like glue. And that's one of those unfortunate things. Um, and, and we talk about that in, in sim racing quite often. But, uh, you know, sometimes you have those those net code instances which uh, we might talk about a little bit later but i do want to move on here and get this over with so a couple laps later uh we had this lap 25 now at fuji so you know these 45 minute races they do they do wear on you you know you get a lot of laps down and hopefully that means you're quite comfortable with the track by the end of the race if you weren't already um but we can see i'm defending again Late in the race, probably just not paying enough attention, just a little mental fatigue, and way too wide, breaking way too late into T1. And we see uh, the same person we've been battling with a lot of the race gets by me there. <clears throat> so, you know, nice little onboard of another mistake that I made. You know, I made a lot of mistakes throughout the season. Olivier, not so much, but uh, hopefully... Uh, he can look back and find some entertainment uh, on all the mistakes I, I was making behind him. So uh, let's go to the end of the race now. And this is the last video we have from Fuji. So I believe this is coming on to the final lap or this is the... Oh, this is the final lap. Okay, so we're coming up to the finish here and you can see... The same car that I had been battling with, who I believe was Jesse Olsen. Is that right, Olivier? Does that look like Jesse Olsen's yeah. car? Yep. So we had basically a race-long battle, and, and you can see that it, it came down to that. I think, again, the margin was maybe like seven-tenths across the line. And, you know, it, it's tough when you're the person seven-tenths behind and not seven-tenths ahead. But it is also a lot of fun to have battles like this and finish so close. Um, you know, it, it can get kind of lonely on your own. So it's definitely nice to have this kind of competition. Um, but closing this out from Olivier's perspective, you had quite a, a, a torrid time. Yeah, frustrating yeah. time at the end of this. You, you ended up getting a... Uh, a penalty uh, for crossing the white line going into the pit lane, I believe. Yeah, yeah, just barely put a. I don't remember which side of the car, but I yeah that the pit lane at Fuji's a little. Uh, it's a little weird, and awkward going in. You know, you come in with a lot of speed, and it kind of just does a little chicane before you actually get into the actual pit lane. And yeah, just crossed it, got the the brutal uh, stop and go penalty, and that was pretty much race over. I mean finished 10th which was really just you know picking up the scraps of what could have been a, a solid result but right. you know you live and you learn right right for sure yeah so i mean at least you still managed to cling on to a top 10 there and um 
with all the fighting I did, I, I managed to end up uh, fifth in that race. So first top five of the season, which was, uh, I think, a very good result for me. It would have been uh, sixth if you had uh, ended up where you should have, Olivier, but either way. Um, yeah, still still a really strong result from you and showing your, you know, your potential that was going to be unlocked in the season. Right, right. Yeah, I definitely felt good there, especially considering that it was my my first time but a last time moves on so we will now go over the third round which was circuit de barcelona catalunya which i'm totally butchering um i have no idea how to actually pronounce that that's just how i pronounce it but anyways we do have you know this was a, quite a spicy round again to be honest um for i think both of us really and uh, we have a lot of stuff to cover here. So I just want to get going and say that in qualifying, uh, Olivier, you qualified in fifth, and I qualified down in tenth. So not the best qualifying effort from us, we should say. Uh, but the, the race uh, shook out quite a bit differently. So let's just start here and pop up this first video which we can see from the tv cams uh coming up to the start of the race and again you can see olivier in the white and blue bmw there and we're focused on him for this video and i'm not sure how well you can see this olivier but if you want to talk us through your start here starting in fifth what's going on in your head what are you thinking about strategy wise if you are um any yeah. of that stuff yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, you know, kind of like Fuji, I knew this is going to be a tough place to pass. Uh, everyone was very close. I think that this was a, a really co uh, close qualifying session, too. And again, you know, I'm like, I got to be aggressive at the start. I got to make up spots now because, uh, you know, the, the first couple of guys were quick, too, and I didn't want them to break away. Um, but, you know, again, struggled uh, in qualifying. You know, definitely was not my, my strong suit. And I also don't think the one lap pace of this car was was very good either but you know the consistency in the car and in my driving throughout the race you know would usually pan out a little bit more in my favor right right yeah that's a good point definitely um thinking ahead that's good and and you you were quite aggressive on this start because you did manage to make up uh a few positions which uh which really helps you later on in the race. But uh, yeah, so with that being said, let's move on again. Uh, we have the next clip lined up here. So this should still be the end of lap one. Now we're focused on me and the Aston Martin here coming around towards the end of the lap. And, and you can see everybody stacked up. I mean, it was, it was definitely a close field and close battles throughout the field, really. Um, coming down to the slow speed section, which again, as I mentioned, was definitely one of my weaker points. And oh goodness, I just spun somebody. So I do remember this incident, actually. Um, the orange Mercedes ahead, who ended up spinning around there, they actually had accidentally put their pit limiter on. So they went from full acceleration to zero acceleration. Um, in an instant, which didn't help, and I was on their tail, obviously not expecting that to happen. I tried to swerve and avoid at the last minute, but I didn't have enough time, unfortunately. Um, looks like my car luckily didn't take too much damage from that. Uh, I guess no harm, no foul in that instance. Um, you know, nobody was brutally hurt. It, it sucks that they got spun around, but... Again, that's racing, and they're the ones who accidentally hit that pit limiter button, which, you know, it does happen on occasion to uh, all of us, I think. I don't know, Olivier, if that's ever happened to you. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe, you know, a couple times if you have, like, a big snap slide and you, you know, have to rotate your hands around the wheel more than once, right. you, know, you might accidentally snag it, but... Yeah, I mean, you, sh you know, probably a good idea to keep it in a place that it's not easily, uh, you know, hit if you have to correct anything. Yep, and, and there we have it from Olivier's point of view. So, we'll move on now to the, to the following lap, lap two.
we have Olivier here up in, uh, I believe, fourth position at this point. So gained one position from the start. And still a pretty close group at, at the front of the field here. Coming into the hairpin, which is very tight. And we have another major collision here. Uh, looked like the Mercedes just outbroke themselves, or maybe the McLaren broke too early. I believe that was uh, Dean in the McLaren, and maybe Andrew in the Mercedes ahead of you, Olivier? Yeah, I think so. And it's, you know, it's just that classic, uh, you know, domino effect. The first car slows down a little bit too hard, the second car doesn't slow down enough, and then everyone gets bunched up. You know, luckily there actually wasn't more contact, even though I think all three of us made contact there at some point. Um, yeah, just kind of clumsy, you know, but it happens, especially in these cars with, with the ABS. You know, if you hit that ABS, it's kind of like riding on ice. So, but, you know, I was able to get out fairly uh, clean. Right. Yeah. Luckily, you came away fairly unscathed and uh, two positions further up than you had started the lap. So uh, that put you up to P2 at this point in the race. And we do have some more. So the next video coming up here is from my point of view again, which at this point, I have no idea where I am um, in terms of position. But it looks like we have somebody coming up the inside of us here. We do. And that is actually uh, the McLaren of Dean, who we just saw <laughs> spinning around in the previous video. Uh, this is now lap nine. And that video that we showed before was lap two. So seven laps later, uh, it looked like I had probably passed Dean when he had his spin and, and he uh, managed to catch back up to me and uh, repass me going into the hairpin here, which again, I think that this was, you know, overall it, it was a nice clean sort of move. You know, we both gave each other enough room and it's still early enough in the race. You don't have to be fighting tooth and nail for every position right we all kind of want to just keep going make sure we can get to the end or at least our pit stops um, and so that kind of covers that little clip so now we'll, we'll move on to lap 15 and uh, you can't see the car but this is from your point of view olivier in second place hunting down uh, jesse olsen in the lead and going into the pit lane so you know, talk us through a little bit of this battle because you had, you know, your work cut out for you catching up to Jesse here and then finally getting to the pits. Yeah, yeah. This that first uh, stint before the pit stop was really difficult mentally because, you know, I was I was maybe one and a half, two seconds back. And what felt like maybe catching him not even a tenth a lap. And, you know, sometimes it would stay the same. So it was really frustrating. I couldn't even get in the draft. Um I think I had Justin behind me pushing as well. We were really trying to get up there and I just didn't quite have enough to, to make anything, uh, you know, any kind of dent into that, um, into that gap. But then in the pit stop, I knew, I knew that I had to go for it. I mean, actually on the entry in the beginning of this clip, I went super deep into the line. I kind of took a risk of, you know, getting a penalty for speeding in the pits. Luckily, uh, that didn't happen, but you know, sometimes you gotta take that risk and it obviously paid off. I gained, you know, a few tenths on the entry and I underfueled the car actually by a few liters as well, just so I could get maybe either closer to him coming out of the, the pit stop or, you know, potentially jump him, which is actually what I was able to do. And, you know, once again, looking at this, you can see how much I'm able to close up by. He's a little conservative going in, you know, which naturally you would be if you're in the lead. Um, but at this point already, I, you know, closed up half that gap. And then, uh, yeah, the rest of it was done in the, in the refuel. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a, a tough battle. And we'll see that, you know, <clears throat> even at the front or or the midfield anywhere, there was there was always a lot of, of stiff competition. So, um, you know, I think for you after this, it was it was really just a race of defense, um, because I know that Jesse definitely didn't let you get away from him uh, for the remainder of the race. Uh, but we'll talk about the finish to that a little bit later because uh, this is lap 15. And uh, a couple laps later, we have the next clip coming up here. And so this is on board with myself again uh, behind one of the McLarens. I think quite a popular choice at this track. But um, 
either way, coming into the hairpin here, slow corner, I'm usually not that good. However, there was kind of a checkup from that first McLaren with the uh, second one here, which is Dean again, and that just allowed me enough space. We actually went too wide through the carousel there, and I managed to hold it around the outside. So I got ahead of uh, this McLaren that we're seeing in front of me right now. And uh, so one position made, and, you know, again, for me, it was just a lot of fun and learning and, and sort of testing how I can race with people and, and where maybe I could potentially make moves. As Olivier said earlier, uh, this track really uh, was tough to pass, so you had to really look for somebody making a mistake to even have a good opportunity. And um, with that being said, I believe another good opportunity presented itself a few more laps later. So we'll skip ahead to lap 21 here. And we can see I'm, I'm behind the purple McLaren of Dean here once again, who, you know, he had passed me much earlier in the race, but then, uh, you know, through some wacky science, I managed to uh, keep up with him, I guess. And he made a little mistake here, ran a bit wide into the sand, just allows me to get side by side going up here, going up the hill, and it looks like I've just just about done him. And, uh, you know, it was a tough battle. Uh, I remember we were battling for quite some time, and he's actually next to me here, which we can't quite see him on the side, but uh, he battled me back, and, and I had to defend a little bit coming into the hairpin, but uh, I did manage to stay in front of him, luckily. So that was, you know, the last of the action from my side to the end of the race. Um, luckily, the rest of it was uh, pretty good and uh, solid consistency. So uh, I ended up actually finishing in fourth position after all was said and done. Now, we've got to understand that this, this really was a race of attrition. We saw throughout the videos that there was a lot of mistakes being made by other drivers and... Uh, meanwhile, Olivier and I uh, both managed solid races without any big mistakes, and I think that helped us both a lot. Um, so from Olivier's side, he ended up, um, you know, being able to defend from Jesse behind him until the end of the race and taking yet another victory. So two wins in three races for you, Olivier. I'm sure you were feeling pretty good after that. Yeah, no, no doubt, you know, that was, that felt good, but still was not uh, feeling that confident in, in the car, to be honest, just, you know, I was, I was enjoying the races, I was enjoying having, you know, really close uh, fights, but sometimes it was a little too close for comfort, and I didn't really feel that there was one place that I had really an advantage, you know, um, even though the results were good, but it was still, they were hard-fought results for sure. Right. Right, and definitely good for your overall championship standings as well, which we will get to probably in the next video. Um, but yeah, so that covers round three at Catalonia. Pretty, um, pretty spicy, as I mentioned before. And then we headed to round four at Okayama. And um, this is definitely a track that... I think, you know, Olivier and I both had experience at, so we both expected to do reasonably well here. Uh, and taking a look here, we actually qualified next to each other on the second row. So, Olivier, you qualified in third, and I qualified in fourth right next to you. So, solid, solid um, effort from both of us in qualifying. And then um, getting to the race, I do have a video from the start, so I would like to share that with everybody. And we'll get that going now. And we can see that, uh, as per usual, everybody's kind of going to the inside. Um, and we can see a pretty spicy battle heating up with me and this Merc on the outside of me going into T1. A uh, little bit of a aggressive move but i think we were both driving pretty aggressive in that situation we probably both could have done a little bit more there to be conservative um, but it did work out for me so uh olivia you made up one position pretty easily there so you're up in second i think even at the race start you were uh, already in second that other lane just didn't get uh a good getaway and then I did manage to follow you and uh, get into the third position. So doing pretty good at this point. 
and uh, just from your perspective, Olivier, how how confident did you feel about the car around Okayama here? And and because we know that you're comfortable at this track, of course. Yeah, this was actually probably the first uh, race that I I felt pretty good uh, with everything, with the setup, with the balance. Um, I think this is also when I discovered that the BMW definitely had its advantage in slow corners. Um, so, you know, the first sector of the lap, you know, not anything too special with this car, but definitely in that middle to last sector with these really tight hairpins, uh, you know, the way the car just gets out of the corner, it was, it was, I knew I had something going there. So it was a little disappointing qualifying, uh, in, you know, in the second row, but I knew, you know, in the race I was going to have the pace. So at this point, I'm just kind of, you know, pacing the guy in the lead and, and going to see how everything plays out. Right, right. So definitely uh, a hopeful, hopeful sort of attitude. And we move on to lap two. I have another clip here from lap two. And this is on board with yourself, Olivier. And just well, as you were just saying, you know, feeling that confidence, uh, just putting it down the inside. Um, I don't even know the, the corner numbers here at Okayama, to be honest. I know the track pretty well, but... Um, couldn't tell you all the numbers for the turns um, but we're coming on the back straight essentially here we can see you're still side by side and going into this little hairpin sort of carousel you had the inside line and you managed to hold it here and i think yeah by this point now you're fully ahead so you know that was that was your pass for the lead right there um just it looked almost relaxed you know like um you had it under control the whole time. Obviously, the Merc maybe a little bit better straight line speed. Um, but how did you feel about this? Yeah, no, I felt good. I had a good uh, exit out of turn two, and just had a nice little run coming down there. I knew. I'm like, okay, I'll go in the brakes there, and um, yeah, and then got it done, and and then just try to get my head down. You know, it's difficult to pull a gap um, in these cars and this track. But yeah, from this point, I felt good right there you have it so lap two i think um there was a little bit of battling between you and uh justin was it yeah yes i believe so yeah i think you guys had a little bit more battling with you coming out on top most of the time and i have one more clip to share from this round uh and this is lap 10 which should be from my point of view here battling still in third here i believe at this point and just getting tagged a little bit by dean and the mclaren and then completely t-boned by the other mclaren there um a little bit of, of an awkward uh scenario we could say and uh you know made me pretty angry as we can see uh i'm driving away here with very very heavy damage on my car i <laughs> I'm pretty sure I looped it here at one point, just trying to uh, to uh, get get away and get back to the pits to repair my damage. But um, you know, it was unfortunate because I, I also felt pretty confident. I was up in third position at this point when the uh, incident occurred, and and was really hoping I could at least hang on for for a fairly stout top five once again. Um, but you know, sometimes these these incidents happen and. Uh, it's kind of just something you got to take and try to learn from it. And, you know, it kind of shows you how your opponents race. And one of the nice things about being in a league, I think, is that a lot of the time you're racing the same people every week. So you can sort of get to learn how to race with certain people, you know, how they're going to react to certain situations. So you can drive a bit safer around, uh, around all of your opponents. But that being said, um that's all the highlights we really had for round four at okayama uh the results are p1 once again for olivier so yet another victory and with my uh incident there on lap 10 that uh reduced me to a 10th place finish for that round so not the strongest result not what i was hoping for um, but another very good result for you, Olivier, and I'm sure at this point, I don't know, were you thinking about 
the the championship already or still just kind of taking it one round at a time yeah i think i think you're always thinking about the championship to be honest you know um but it's so early on that you just got to take it race by race and uh you know the the last race's results doesn't dictate how the next one's going to go you know so just because you come off with a win doesn't mean that the next one's going to go smoothly so just gotta you know focus on on each race as it comes right okay well as each race comes we got to the following race round five at none other than laguna seca so i don't have too many on boards here to be honest but this was quite a spicy race and i hope a few of these on boards are from your perspective olivier i believe they are just to set the tone at the beginning in qualifying olivier you managed p3 again so uh, quite a few p3s in qualifying and i qualified in seventh position so i would say that you know for me that was a solid qualifying effort anything sort of within the the top 10 maybe top eight at this point was uh was a good result for me for qualifying and with that being said uh we have a lot to talk about with this round but i want to start it off with none other than the start of the round so i've got this clip coming up now and luckily it is from your perspective olivier so we've got you starting in p3 still p3 coming into t turn one down here and uh, we'll see when the carnage starts to unfold a little bit i know it wasn't at the start it was uh quite a few laps into the race actually but uh what's going through your head at this point you know you, you kind of know your your opponents ahead and their intentions so talk us through it a little bit yeah this this was just like a kind of all-out fight i don't think there was any uh real strategy going into this um i think very quickly just based off the opening lap with how aggressive everyone was i think it kind of just set the mood for the rest of the race at least on my end that's what it felt like um i just i took the opportunities at the start as i usually try to anyways but um yeah i mean wasn't really feeling again another one of those races where i wasn't feeling amazing about uh you know just my own pace or anything and the guys around me this one was also i think this might have been a one of the bigger fields uh in the season uh so there was definitely a lot of cars and a lot of a lot of competition in the top 10 so yeah, I mean, I saw this and I, I was like, that's it. I'm going to go and take it. And it was going to be tough with them both on the inside here. You can kind of see in my mirror. Uh, but I was able to kind of outbreak them and uh, get around by the apex. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you managed to, to hold it on the outside there and, and just, just get enough space to get in front of them. But uh, really aggressive moves already at the start, as you said, just you know somebody making a little mistake into uh what is that turn three or four over there um yeah but either way yeah it just kind of bunches everybody up and i think it was a really good opportunistic move here we can see it again uh by you just nipping up the inside and then realizing oh you can nip uh inside both of them and uh kill two birds with one stone and uh you managed to hold on to it going into the next corner here so uh, good start uh, up to P1 already. And then we do have another clip coming up. So that was the start, obviously. And now we're on lap five. And we can still see intense battling um, from the sort of helicopter view here above now. Um, that's you, Olivier, battling with one of the Mercs once again. They uh, throw it on the inside, going through the corkscrew and then you oh you think about a lunge there maybe a little tap but uh you know nobody ends up in in the sand or a wall so all good there but uh what was your mindset at this point in the race because obviously we we, we weren't able to watch through the first four laps that got to this point but uh you know what was going on what was the mentality uh at the front of the field here uh, i was definitely angry at this point because um, whoever the guy in the lead was, I don't remember exactly in this race, but someone was out in the lead, as you can see here, the orange car. And, you know, these, 
these pack of guys that I'm in, they just wanted to fight every every corner, you know, and we within a lap or two we lost quite a few seconds to the lead and pretty much ruined any chance of, of getting that back. So I was pretty pretty annoyed already just at the situation that I was kind of put in based on my track position. And then uh, the lunge in into the the downhill corkscrew, that was uh, kind of what set me off at least. I mean, that's just not a place that I'm, I'm a fan of people passing. Obviously, you know, everyone's entitled to pass wherever they want. As you see, I, you know, I had to concede, but it just felt like such a waste of time, that move, per personally. Um, you know, when, if he had that pace, he probably could have gotten me where we wouldn't have lost anything. Yeah, that's right. And um, I'm not sure what's going on. I think your audio is cutting out a little bit if you just want to check your settings there. But oh, okay. I was able to, to get most of that. And as you mentioned, yeah, sometimes you have those races where everybody seems to just want to fight the entire race through. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of that. I think, you know, I, I try to drive pretty conservatively and without losing any time for the majority of the race, even if I do have a close battle with somebody and then we can fight it out at the end once we, you know, have sort of a buffer to the, the groups behind us or what have you. So anyways, we will move on now. So that was lap five. That was a battle for second position, which at this point you won. So you were back in second position, but uh, I'd say P1 was pretty much out of reach already at this point, uh, losing so much time battling for this spot. So a few laps later, we have the next clip coming up here. Uh, lap nine, so you're coming back up the hill again here on lap nine. We can't quite see, but I'm sure somebody else is going to have their... Uh, yep, here comes uh, Jesse Olsen, I believe, again. And uh, he's going to have his opportunity. He gets around you, and you immediately nip back up the inside here. So, as you said, just fighting all the way through. And, and we can see P1 just rounding the final corner here already just getting a, a huge gap because of all this fighting that's going on here and another lunge by Jesse. So, you know, at, at this state, you know, this stage of the race, Olivier, what is what is your mentality now? If you were already pretty angry, um, what, what are you thinking of now? Maybe like uh, taking an early pit stop just to get out of all these battles or what's going on in your head? Yeah, I guess I should rephrase. It was more, you know, just frustration. It's not anger. You know, obviously, I'm always happy to have a nice a nice battle. Um, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, I look back and this is this was a great fight. A uh, very, very hard fight. But, you know, sometimes it's good to have those. Yeah, I was really just trying to clear them and, uh, and try to see if I could pull a gap. If not, then definitely considering that early pit stop, which I think I might have actually ended up doing. Um... But yeah, just just kind of frustrated, and and you know you can see actually in the beginning of this clip I made a mistake then uh, out of turn one, and then I lost another <laughs> two or three spots. So yeah, just frustration. Right. Yeah. So you know that's that's all the clips we have for this round, and um, I think there was definitely a bit more battling. Um, you made your way back up the order through pit stop strategy or one way or another. So you ended up uh, finishing second in the race, so still one position up from uh, your your uh, grid position. However, obviously the leader just a little too fast and a little too far ahead to catch. Uh, meanwhile, I was a bit further back. I remember for myself, uh, this race was going fairly solid. I ended up losing a lot of time for little things i think i was slow in and out of the pit lane and i lost quite a bit of time doing that so um, i ended up in seventh place which is exactly where i started so nothing lost or gained for me there solid result but again i came away from that race thinking you know i could have had a top five if if uh, i had done everything properly at least and that wraps up round five at laguna seca so we got a couple rounds to go here. And the first one, round six, was at, well, sort of our, our home track, right? Sebring. 
Yeah, definitely. I would consider both of our our home tracks. Um, yeah, always excited to come back to Sebring. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's a great track. I love it. I know you love it. Um, it's always a good time. And I remember specifically uh, the field was was really close in this race, and uh, that made it all the more exciting. Uh, however, uh, because of maybe our time constraints more than anything else, I don't I don't have too much to show. But let's let's start with qualifying again here. So Olivier, you qualified in first place, so another pole position, which is definitely good and maybe somewhat expected being kind of a home race. And then I qualified in fifth position, which is, you know, definitely a solid result for me. So, you know, this race had a lot of, let's say, twists and turns for myself. For you, Olivier, not so much. Um, <laughs> we'll get to that later. But in terms of my race, it was it was a hard battle. Um, I, I recall battling in this sort of secondary group, the... The top three cars, including Olivier, sort of had gotten away, but then there was another bunch of us, maybe three or four cars, that were battling for, you know, fourth on down. And it, it was really tough, and we were all really close, and it did eventually come to a head, I believe, after pit stops. So on lap 15, which would have been, I believe, more than halfway through the race, uh, because the laps are just so long, at Sebring, it's such a long track, but we do have a video. So, lap 15 at Sebring, here we go. Coming under the bridge into turn seven here, you can see me in the Aston Martin, little three car battle. We have the Mercedes and the BMW surrounding us. And, you know, I remember thinking this is fun. I'm getting, you know, the headlight flashers from the car behind me. Um, and, and I think for me, I wasn't used to all that pressure and coming into turn 10 here. I just, you know, I, I broke, we had a classic, what you talked about, I, I believe when we were reviewing the Catalonia round Olivier, where one car uh, breaks a little bit too early and the other car breaks a little bit too late and you have that ABS and uh, just kind of skating on ice. So that's sort of what happened in that instance there where I broke maybe a tad too late, but I'm sure if it was me alone, I could have still made the corner. Uh, however, the car in front of me also decided to break a tad early um, from maybe the normal braking zone. So it just kind of wasn't something that could have been avoided at that point. Um, couldn't really dive down the inside at the last minute because I didn't want to just end up T-boning anyone. And uh, I got spun around and then hit a second time and then hit the BMW. So three hits on my car. And we can see I come away from that. Um, yeah, pretty bruised and broken my car is at this point. And uh, luckily I, I did limp it back to the pits eventually. But I did end that race down in a 16th position. It was a, a, a pretty big field um, and, and a close one. So even though I, I definitely had the top five pace, uh, once I lost all, all the time from this incident, uh, there was just no making it up because even, you know, 10th or 12th position, they weren't that much slower than me. We, we just had such a tight field at this round. So there wasn't much I could do uh, except just nurse it home and get to the end and, you know, maybe hope that somebody else drops out or makes a mistake, which didn't really happen. Um, Speaking of mistakes, Olivier, I think you made exactly zero mistakes in this race. You let it start to finish through the pit stops, everything. Um, you, you definitely had somebody close behind you the whole time, um, but I'm not sure what you remember about this race, if you had uh, anything you wanted to mention. Uh, not too much. It was a pretty straightforward one, I think. Um... Yeah, it's no secret that I love Sebring. So, you know, I definitely enjoy this one. And even though I didn't have, uh, you know, any real battling on the track, um, you know, I had a lot of pressure from behind. But, yeah, it was just, it was a really solid race. Uh, you know, one that I felt good with, uh, you know, regarding the car. And, yeah, it was, I was happy to come away with the, with the win. All right. 
sounds good. So now let's move on to the last round for this video. That'd be round seven in Charlotte. And I guess I'll take over most of this uh, final piece because Olivier, you uh, you couldn't make it to this round. I, I think uh, Hurricane Ian got in your way at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately I lost power. Uh, I think just a few hours before the race actually started, so yep, that so. was it for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, you couldn't join, but uh, I was more than happy to uh, take the reins for Quantum Autosport and uh, try to bring a, a good result to uh, the team. So looking here, I actually managed somehow, um, unimaginably almost to qualify in second position which is by far my best qualifying performance uh in this league and you know i think it was i want to believe it was on merit i'm not sure if it was uh, because we did still have a lot of the fast drivers there um you know the hurricane luckily didn't affect too many people so we still had a pretty solid field and uh, many of the quick drivers. But with that being said, of course, we talk about pressure. Myself still trying to get the hang of sim racing and, and all of that good stuff. Uh, still trying to get used to the pressure. Didn't quite work out. And, and we'll see that now going through lap one. So we've got the video up here going through the start. And we can see, so I'm starting here in second position into turn one charlotte is just such a weird track you know so i have driven it before so i had a little bit of experience i'm not a huge fan of this track to be completely honest with you um i think it's tough and we can see the pole man just um completely spinning his car um you know like a quarter of the way through the opening lap and so at this point, I had basically just inherited first place. So I think this is the first time I had ever, like, led a league race. Uh, so no pressure, right? Olivier, I don't know if you remember the first time maybe you were you were leading, like, a big race that, that meant a lot to you and uh, sort of your emotions towards that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you really just have to uh, not let it get to you and, and just kind of do your thing, you know? Um, it's weird, you know, when you're used to following a car in a race, but you have to pretty much switch your mind out of that and just focus on your own laps. Right. So that being said, we're coming up to, there's a little bus stop here, and this is where I made my crucial error. In qualifying, I had taken this exact line, just like this. And, uh, yes, you can see I was on two wheels for probably an entire second there. Um, uh, but I had done it in qualifying and practice, and it did work out fine most of the time. Um, but then sometimes uh, I completely destroyed my car, which is exactly what it did here. Uh, so you can see I totally missed like two corners at the end of the lap there. Uh, my car wouldn't turn anymore um, because it was just the suspension was toast. And, um, you know, it's a sad thing to do um, on the first lap when you're leading for the first time in a league and you uh, you know, the, the, the tension was high for me, at least, sitting there uh, just hoping it would work out. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't. But you live and you learn. And I do think, to some extent, I knew that the the uh, guys directly behind me were faster. And if I had any chance, I would have to uh, really push 110% from the green flag. So I was attempting to do that. And uh, in that attempt, I uh, managed to damage the car to the point of it not wanting to turn anymore. So I did eventually, after having to limp around for an entire lap, because remember, that was at the very end of the lap, and, and I had already missed the pit lane by that point. Um, I did limp back into the pits, got the car repaired, got back out, and uh, drove uh, my little heart out as much as I could. And the only other noteworthy thing, I was on my own most of the time, but we have one more video that I'm pulling up here from lap 10. And uh, you see somebody in front of me, or are they? 
Uh, so this is another another problem that happens in, in sim racing uh, somewhat frequently, where uh, you just uh, have somebody with poor connection. And it was pretty sketchy for me here. I don't know, Olivia, if you want to talk about this a little bit, I know you've probably had some moments. You know, what's it like for you? Because uh, I know for me it was pretty terrifying trying to pass this car that kept glitching in and out of sight for me. But uh, how do you manage this? How do you feel about this sort of situation? Uh, I mean, I don't like it because you have no clue what's going to happen. But, yeah, it's pretty much a 50-50 chance if you either somehow accidentally hit them, you know, while they're blinking or, you know, you get through. And obviously, you got very lucky in this case. Right. And, and I had been following this car fairly close for a while at this point. And, um, you know, I was being as careful as I could. But at the same time, they were slowing me down. And, and I wanted to finish as high up as possible and make a little bit of a return. So, um, yeah, like you said, I think maybe a little bit more luck than anything else that I, I managed to pull off this pass without any sort of contact. Uh, hopefully they could see me well enough and, and that sort of aided in making sure there wasn't an incident there. Um, but needless to say, that uh, that is the end uh, for round seven in terms of clips. I did manage to come back up i think after i pitted for damage i was down in last obviously because it was like on lap two um and i managed to make my way back up to p7 so actually not a bad return um i made quite a few passes including that fairly sketchy one you just saw but with that uh we are at the end so that is half of the season covered uh rounds one through seven and, uh, you know, I think solid results from both of us, some mistakes on my side, maybe not so much on your side, Olivier. Um, but yeah, do you have any, I guess, concluding thoughts, at least at this point for, uh, being halfway through the season review? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think we felt pretty good. You know, we felt strong at this point. We had, I think we both had some issues, but overall, I think there were some good positives to take from it. Right. Right. Yes, I uh, I concur with that sentiment. Well, with that being said, I think we'll end here and uh, start back up the uh, next video, part two, to get through to the end of the season. So um, thank you, everybody, for watching and thanks for co-hosting with me, Olivier. Always a, a pleasure having you uh, on of with course. me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Well, we'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.